Today we look at the magic career of Mark Akers. A second round pick by the Mavericks in the 1985 draft, Akers played overseas initially before signing to play with the Boston Celtics in 1987. After two uneventful seasons, the Magic selected Akers in the expansion draft and his planned role was to back up Dave Corzine at centre. In the Magic's first season, most players had to deal with constantly changing rotations and a battle for minutes. But for Akers, once Corzine went down injured in the third game of the season, he was thrust into the starting position and all the minutes he could handle. Corzine and Akers were the Magic's only players taller than 6 foot 9. And while the Magic played Sydney Green at centre for parts of the season, Akers got 50 of the 68 starts from his entire career in that first year in Orlando. Akers was thought to be limited offensively, airballing a potential game-winning eight-footer during the season against the Bucks. But he was a dependable rebounder and a hard-nosed defender who kept opposing centres honest. He often performed well against marquee big men during the first season, notching up double-doubles playing against Brad Doherty, Patrick Ewing and twice against David Robinson. At the end of the season, the Magic identified centre as a key need, signing free agent Greg Kite, trading Sidney Green for a draft pick and journeyman Mark McNamara, and picked up an undersized Howard Wright off waivers. Wright was trialled as the backup centre initially, and in November, Akers didn't play much, getting only spot minutes battling McNamara as the third string centre until he was waived. Akers played hard when he got his opportunities, and in early December, he got into a scuffle with Derek Coleman and the Nets bench fighting for a loose ball. Coincidence or not, after that game, Akers was promoted to the backup centre position, and a few days later, Wright was waived, clearing the way for him to get consistent minutes for the rest of the season. Akers was dependable. In a game against the Bucks, where Greg Kite was ejected, he stepped up and grabbed a career-high 17 rebounds. And as the team made a great late season run, Akers was playing over 26 minutes a game in April, averaging 7 rebounds and almost 6 points a game. Akers' strong finish to the season saw him brought back for a third year by the Magic, but they used the pick that they acquired in the Sydney Green trade to draft centre Stanley Roberts, and they played rookie Brian Williams up front at times as well. With the Magic finally having some depth at the centre position, Akers' minutes became inconsistent. He started the season playing with his jaw partially wired shut after breaking it during the summer, but scored 12 points on opening night to help the Magic win whilst battling Patrick Ewing. There were some bright spots in Akers' final season with the Magic, including double-doubles against Sacramento and Cleveland, but a groin injury in January didn't help him in his fight to stay on the court. With the team limping to the finish line with just 20 wins, Akers was given big minutes in the final three games of the season, two of which he started, to gauge his capabilities as he headed into free agency. At the end of the season, Akers wasn't sure if he would stick around in the NBA or head back to Europe. Ultimately, he left the Magic, playing only 18 more games in his NBA career for the Rockets and Bullets before finishing his career in Portugal. In Akers' 216-game Magic career, he put up averages of 4 points and just under 5 rebounds a game. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Magic career of Mark Akers. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and check back soon for our next episode, a look at the Magic career of Terry Catledge.